Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes Training Tuesdays here on the Sound Strategy Network. I am your host, Bridger, and with me, as always, is my exacerbated co-host, Rogers. Welcome to the show. Bruh! This episode is cursed. All ye beware. Anyway. Yeah, this is the third try, because I forgot to fix the audio the first two times, so we didn't have any sounds recorded. My bad. Indeed. All right. So today, if you haven't noticed, we are talking about fortifications, that all the different sense. types of things that you can build on the field that can give you some kind of an advantage in one way or another. So let's start by talking about mines. Mines are a great little addition to any strategy. In fact, they are probably something you want to build every time if you are Americans or Wehrmacht, uh, without exception. Uh, you should have some in the game. This is the first kind of mine that you can build. It's 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 the mine that uh, well, sorry, not the first kind, but the first place where you'd want to put a mine, and that's right next to a point that your opponent is going to capture. It doesn't matter. It could be a strategic point, or it could be um, it could be a victory point. It could be uh, a fuel point. But if you expect your opponent to go and try and take it back, you can build a mine in the path that they would take to come and take it. So my opponent's going to be coming from this side if he gave his units a, a ability to come take it, and they'd run straight into the mine. Now, the reason that you do that is because if you just put a mine anywhere out here, then there's not a very good chance your opponent will go and hit it. But if you put it right next to the OP here, they will definitely go and do that. Now, here's another sneaky trick. If you put two in a row next to a point you expect your opponent to try and capture, normally it wouldn't be OP'd like this because the mine will actually probably damage your own observation point. So just pretend that doesn't exist. So, in this situation, if we put a second mine here, if we're particularly wealthy when it comes to munitions, so your, your opponent comes running up, they hit the first mine, and they take a whole bunch of damage. Then, they do one of two things. They either retreat and come back, and hit the second mine, or they continue on and hit the second mine. Either way, you've just killed a lot of units or bought yourself a lot of time. So that's kind of a sneaky little one-two punch there. So that's one of the first kinds of mines that you, first places that you'd want to build a mine. Another good place to build a mine is in a place like this, right here in the center of the map. A choke point that your opponent is going to be spending a lot of time walking through. This is a great example right here. And we got some engineers in my way. So, GTFO engineers. I have things to do in the center of the map. So, that's one spot. Another good spot would be right here, because there's a lot of times units are passing through this particular point. Another spot would be right here, because this break in the hedgerow is another very popular spot. Another great spot is right in front of this doorway, because this building is simply so important to the control of this strat point that your opponent will oftentimes try to jump into it to try and deny you control of the strat point. So you can put one, like, right here in front of the door, so when he tries to go in there, instead, he gets blown up. So, uh, yes, being blown up is always, well, blowing up your opponent, that's always good. So... Those are the three kinds of places that you're usually going to want to place a mine. But uh, there's one more place that can be very useful. If you want to take out enemy vehicles, you want to do it on a road or a, a path, a very specific choke point that you expect that they will be going down. So if you expect that the enemy is going to be bringing um, uh, vehicles down this road here, you can put a couple of mines right in a row parallel to the road. And this is a, a great example of this would be on Simwa, the main road that runs through the town or the roads that go over the bridges to the various bases. Uh, you put two mines in a row, and because it's on a road, the vehicle's traveling quickly, and it will hit the first mine, and even if it's opponent, if, if uh, your opponent says, oh crap, I want to stop him because he's now just hit a mine, the momentum will carry him through into the second mine, and that makes a very good spot and a very good amount of damage on vehicles, specifically. So you can put a pair of these on a road that you expect your opponent to come down on. So that's placement. Uh, why don't you talk to us about the different types of mines, Rogers? All right, well, we have a few different kinds of mines that you'll see in the game. The most common is the one that we've been demonstrating, which is the regular mine ability used by the pioneers, engineers, and can also be used by riflemen with the defensive operations ability, which we'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, the British have the ability to lay mines through their sappers once they... Actually, I believe their default ability allows them to uh, lay... Uh, mines, but we have to get the uh, whatever that one of the refresh my memory. What's Demolitions the ability? Demolitions and dispersal disposal squad. 
Yeah, that's that's when they get their mine sweepers and the demo charges as well. But I believe that they have the ability to lay mines right out of the bat. Um, I, yeah, I, I believe I'm correct. And then also the uh, Panzer Elite are able to lay mines with the Schwimmwagen if they choose. I believe it's Scorched Earth. I believe and, so too. It could be Tank Destroyers as well. I think it's one of the two. Uh, anyway, um, also they have the Munitions Half Track, which is probably the most underused unit in the game next to the Funk Wagon, which can also lay a mine that I believe at least was slightly more powerful than a regular mine. Um, it's quite useful, and no one expects uh, the Panzer Elite to lay mines, so lay mines. That's yeah, the Schwim Wagon mine or the or the uh, Munitions Track mine can really catch your opponent off guard. And here's another type I forgot to mention: you can put a mine behind green cover on your opponent's side of that cover. And they will attempt to run there for safety, but instead Did find death and destruction waiting for them. So, for example, on this green cover right here, um, you know, I might grab the other side of this truck, and when my opponent comes up to try and take this side of the truck, he'll get blown up by a mine. Another great thing is, uh, you know, lay out a little bit of um, a little bit of sandbag, and we'll talk about the sandbags again in a second. But lay out some sandbags like you're going to use them, and then put a mine on the other side. And then when your opponent comes to uh, to take advantage of those sandbags, haha, that sucker, he left those sandbags for me to take, blah, ha, 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 and then he runs right into your, one of your mines. So any way that you can try and pull your opponent into a mine is usually, uh, usually a good thing uh, to do. So I believe that's it, except let's talk about detection when it comes to mines. Now, very easy for the Americans or the Wehrmacht, they have a mine detector on the Pioneers and Engineers, so they can simply, you know, equip that and then those units can detect and dispose of mines. You would simply have to right click on revealed mines and they would uh, deactivate them. Now another thing to point out is that when mines are revealed, they will disappear again after, uh, for uh, like 10 or, 10 or so seconds after your minesweepers leave the area. So when they are revealed, they can't do damage to you. Your units can walk over them in perpetuity, no problem. But as soon as they hide again, then they can do more damage. So you want to uh, dispose of them while you have the chance. And there are ways you can use grenades and any kind of explosive thing like an M8 or uh, some of the heavier weapons like bars can also destroy mines that are in the ground if you target them. But um, the best way to do it would be with uh, either the sappers, the engineers, or the pioneers. So... I uh, think that's the main way that you're going to detect and dispose of mines, but the Panzer Elite have uh, some very specific methods with which they have to do it. For example, they have the Kettenkrad, which is their recon unit. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I should also mention that the British light uh, reconnaissance, when you upgrade their infantry section to reconnaissance, I believe that can also detect mines in a small radius around it. Um, but the Panzer Elite, the Kettenkrad, is their main you method of dis detecting you're mines. Uh, and... The other sort of so so softer counter to mines would be field craft, which is an upgrade at the Comcraft Center, I believe, uh, that w allows all Panzer Elite squads, all the Panzer Grenadier squads, and the Fallschirmjägers, but not the uh, light. Um, what are those troops in the in the Luftwaffe tree that I can't remember the name of? Um, it's failing me now. The buildable guys. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, the Luftwaffe Ground Forces. The Ground Forces. The Ground Forces. That's the name I was looking for. The Luftwaffe yeah. Ground Forces cannot detect mines with field craft. However, the Fallschirmjägers can get hmm. this advantage. Weird. So, um, what it requires is your units to stop completely, and then in a small area around them, they'll be able to see the mines. So, you would have to do this, and then they stop, and then you move like this, and then they'll stop, and they'll detect, and then they'll move like this. And then they'll stop, but nobody wants to do that. So here's a little tip that you can use when you're playing Panzer Elite specifically. I'm just using Pioneers because that's what I have in front of me. Um, you use the Attack Move key, and you queue up a series of orders holding down the Shift key, like this. And now I can go do something else, and these units will pause at each section of that order. See, they wait, and then they go on to the next section. So that allows them to detect mines as they're moving forward. You simply have to make sure the int, the, uh, the, uh, the space between the orders is small enough that they can detect the mines. So, you know, you can use the hotkeys and do this. And now they're detecting, and I can go over here and do something else. So that is a way to get uh, your Panzer Grenadiers to detect mines. 
uh, along a path that they're moving by. But well, by far the best around. way to do it is simply to use the Ket and Krad's ability to detect mines and then blow them up with Panzer Shreks or something fun. All right, so without f any further ado, I think that's the end of mines. Let's move on to the others. All right, so let's talk about wire sandbag tank traps and observation posts. So you got your sandbags here, and it gives you kind of the basically the best kind of green cover usually. Although for some reason, there's always that one guy in the squad that runs out to the other. Like a perfectly good cover right here, and when you tell him to get behind it, one guy runs way out to the side sometimes, and I'm not entirely sure why. This guy, what the hell? This right there, you idiot! Like, come on, you're ruining it for everyone. All right, so sandbags, really great cover, but as we mentioned, is a double-edged sword. Your opponent can use that cover against you. Now, we talked about one way to stop your opponent from using it against you is to put a mine on the other side. Another way is to use wire. And let me see if I can get this correct right there. If we put wire on this other side, we're going to deny our opponents the ability to use this cover and we are still going to be used for our own purposes. Just like that. Now, if I'm a, playing the attacker from this side and I want to take advantage of this green cover, I try, but I can't. The units physically can't get close enough to the sandbags to take advantage of it, so they can't really use that. If it's in the middle of a big, hectic firefight and they try to jump in here, they can't do it. They need to wait until they have a pioneer or an engineer to come and cut the uh, the barbed wire. So that's a great way to allow you to use sandbags and not have to worry about your opponent taking it and using it against you, at least not right away. Now you'll notice what I did was I had a mine underneath that barbed wire for a double trap. So if they send their pioneers or engineers to come over here and cut the wire so that they can use these sandbags, <laughs> uh, it's a good time. Anyway, Let's talk more about the sandbags here. Uh, now, we already, everybody should know probably that if you tell your pioneers or engineers or sappers they can cut wire by going over to it and they just clip it with the clippers and boom, there goes the wire and it's out of the way. So if you needed to get through this wire, for example, that's the process that you would use. But uh, for a long time, we had a problem with sandbags. Rogers, why don't you tell us about that hilarious problem? <clears throat> Well, back in the day, people basically, um, especially the the Americans had to pay for uh, the wire cutter upgrade back in the day. Mm -hmm. And so what the Germans like to do, in addition to that, to not only make them spend, they'd you know, put down some wire early game, then they'd make them spend the, uh, the munitions, and, or no, uh, the uh, manpower and fuel, I yeah, believe it was. Yeah, fuel, yeah. Yeah, uh, to get the wire cutters, and then they'd start building sandbags behind it. So there was no way to get rid of sandbags. Jeeps couldn't drive over them. Nothing could cut through them. You'd have to get a, a, an M8. You'd have to get a quad, something like that. I believe quads can drive over it. That sounds yeah. right to me. Um, but you'd have to get something to be able to drive over it. So in the meantime, you'd lose you know, half map control or you'd lose like a vital fuel point or something like that. Uh, it could create a choke point from hell, basically, especially if it's like a little footbridge on Leon, which is the worst map ever. Um, it, it just, if you watch the Leon game that Bridger just recently posted, it shows, uh, the, both sides, tank trapping and sandbagging their respective bridges. There was nothing that they, either side could do You'd about that. You'd have to shoot at it for, like, five minutes in order to take it out. Yeah, e even then, it would take a lot longer, because those things are, and basically, so Relic decided, they saw that, and they heard enough people complaining, so they put in the wire cut ability for sandbags. Right, so when funny. you, we'll, we'll just watch right here as he uses the wire cutters to clip through sandbags, and poof, they disappear like magic. <laughs> Bam. Poof, they just disappear. <laughs> I like how they have, somehow, somebody in the animation department or whatever is like, I don't want to animate them pulling the sandbags apart, so we'll just use the wire cutter animation and we'll have some magic fairy dust appear. <laughs> yep. So that happened. All right, so that's a little bit of a, a less well-known tip is if somebody is sandbagging you, um, which is not at all like teabagging, don't worry. No, um, no, you can use the wire cutters to deal with that. And I would not want to see wire cutters used to deal with a teabagger. Oh, man, that just... I don't know why my mind went there. So, yeah. let's talk about some other things that you can do. <laughs> <clears throat> With uh, barbed wire. Well, you can use barbed wire to scout for snipers and stormtroopers. <laughs> if you recall from game infamous game number 26, when a stormtrooper sneak assault was completely foiled by, by, by the barbed wire that revealed them. That's what's one way to use barbed wire. I'm not sure if it still does that, actually. 
Uh, no, I don't think it does. I think they I fixed that barbed wire revealing cloaked units thing. But uh, let's see. What else? Sandbags can be used uh, as, as good cover. You can block it off like that. Um, you can use wire aggressively to... Uh, let's see if we can do this. Let's send these guys over here. And then these guys are going to go right here. And then we'll do this right here. So this is something that you might want to consider. So my opponent can't see this. Rogers doesn't know what's going on yet because it's not within range of his strategic point. Now maybe when these guys come quite over here, he might see something on his minimap and start to respond. But wire goes up very quick. And so he might not have units right in the right place to respond to this. So now if he has units back at his base, for example... I can and, see your pioneers. Uh, he, he's now seeing my pioneers, and he's going, oh, shit, and he's going to send units from his base. But it's too late because the wire just went up, and now the only way for him to get units to recapture this very important strategic point is to either come all the way around this way, in which case, hopefully, you'll have some mines waiting for him there beforehand. That makes this trap even better. Or to send in an engineer to clip this wire. And while clipping the wire, the engineers get torn up by fire really well. So, uh, what the hell is going on over here? I'm playing grenade baseball. Okay, then. I didn't know I was that boring. <laughs> anyway, when clipping the wires, the, uh, the engineers and the pioneers are both very vulnerable. I think they take something like three times more damage when, they, uh, when they're Oops, doing that. Well, so, yeah. this is a great example of offensive wire used to try and uh, take a point and prevent your opponent from getting it back. Another sneaky way to do it would be something like... Let's see if I can do this correctly... Just oh, like munitions. this, <laughs> and like this, and like this. Hopefully this will work. Um, now, obviously you're not necessarily going to have this much time all the time, but maybe if you force your opponent back to their base, um, you can do this kind of a thing. You basically are going to try and wire off the point such that the only way in is to what looks like you spent 600 munitions on grenades. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. I know, right? So what we have here is we have um, we have these guys getting out of the way is what we have here. And then we have this. Oh, they're trapped. They're trapped! No! But anyway, you can see what I was trying to do here was to finish and just leave a gap. Because remember, we can use mines anywhere that we have a choke point. And we can even artificially create a choke point and put a mine there. So let's break out these stupid Volksgrenadiers from the wire trap they just put themselves in. Um, please don't try this at home because it's clearly not working. Delete the wire. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. You used to be able no, to you used to be able to delete the wire. And yeah. tank traps. Yeah, that was frustrating, to say the least. Okay. So, uh, that's wire and sandbags, I think. Let's talk about, uh, observation posts and when to use observation posts. They are, uh, they provide, uh, multiple roles. They make the point harder to recapture because your opponent will either have to shoot at it with small arms for a very long time or bring some kind of explosive or flame weaponry to take out the observation post. It also increases the income of fuel and munitions by a great margin. The larger the point, the bigger the margin. So uh, this 16 point goes up to 26 when it's uh, OP'd, and 10 points go up to uh, 18, and 5s go up to 8s. So you can see that low fuel and low munitions points, you really don't want to put an OP on, and you almost never want to put an OP on a strap point, I mean, there are very few situations where I would think that's a good idea. Um, but you may also consider um, putting an OP on a point simply to hold it. Every once in a while, that might be one of your reasons for doing it. So let's see if this works out. Um, now, they cost 200 manpower, so Rogers, how often and, and, and when in a match would you build an observation post? Well, it really, it's all about tailoring your strategies. If you, like, let's say we're taking Simwa for an example, or even this map, um, but I would, I'm going to use Simwa as an example because it has uh, medium fuel points as opposed to high. Um, mediums are a good thing to observation posts due to the fact that it bumps them up to a significant level. What is it, an 18? Yes, yeah. it goes from 10 yeah. to an 18. And I think that's okay. actually 
18.999 or something to that effect. Like the, the fractions yeah, are right always now. rounding down when it comes to resources, so you never quite truly see the right number. Right. Anyway, um, what I would suggest doing if you, like let's say you're playing Americans against yeah. uh, Panzer Leap. And uh, one of the good things to do about that is either get a very early half track with the 50 cal or get the M8 really early. That will shut down a PE game most of the time unless the guy knows what he's doing. But the, the, the thing you want to do is I normally go about three squads if I'm going to go for an OP to get on the fuel. Um, and then after that, just bring out a really fast M8 or a really fast quad. Quad you can get out faster. Just save up 100 munitions so you can use it instantly. And uh, that can be very devastating in the first uh, under 10 minutes in the game if you play it right. Uh, but the thing you want to keep in mind is is you're going to be a squad down. So you need as much combat power on the field to hold what you need to hold before you decide to go for that fast tech. Because if, if you only have two, one or two squads out and you're working on a fast tech, there's a good chance, especially if he's PE, he's going to be able to overwhelm the entire map in the meantime. And then when you come out with your, your motor pool unit, if you even can, it's not going to be able to make a difference. Yep, it's very situational. At least bring out two to three uh, fighting squads and only OP if you, you know, you, you've got a good map control, you won the first couple of skirmishes, then you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, you're not, you're not as hard up for fighting power because you already did some damage to him and he did less back to you. So uh, let's go on and talk about the uh, tank traps. These are known as dragon's teeth in the uh, the menu here. Actually, no, they changed them, aren't they? They're just all called tank traps now. Or maybe I just got that name from somewhere else. Um, no, you did. That's what the German tank traps are called. Yeah, they don't show them in the menu anymore. They're all just called tank traps. That's sad face. It is sad face. What are you doing over here? Get I don't know. Here. I'm just visiting the neighborhood. I'm sorry. Oh, man, you just weaved between, like, three sets of mines. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you never touched any of them. Awesome. All right, so here's a good example of how you might use tank traps. They're very rarely used, but this is maybe one of the more legitimate uses. If you have the time with a pioneer or engineer squad, um, you can put a pack set up in here, and what these effectively do is force your... is your opponent is not able to simply charge the pack and circle strafe it with uh, Sherman, for example, and knock the thing out uh, without it being able to fight back. The only op openings here would be this spot right here and this spot up here to really easily get behind the pack, and I've got a mine in both of those positions. So, tank traps can be used to prevent your opponent from flanking your AT gun, and they can also be used to create small, uh, you know, obstacles that can then be, you can mine. So, example, you know, put this thing right here, and then put a mine on either side. And now, there we go, and now when your opponent comes this way with vehicles, they will have to go around this, and usually the vehicles will path as close as they can to their target. So if they, you know, point down here somewhere, they'll go see the tank traps and then go right around it into your mine. So that's a kind of a neat little trick that you can do. But these are, again, much less used and, um, you know, because they are so time consuming to build, usually you don't have the time to do all this. So maybe this is more likely in a, in a team game. But again, the only really useful thing I can think of is when you've got a pack sitting somewhere in the back and you want to prevent it from being flanked. I think that is it for the main fortifications. Let's move on and talk about the faction-specific stuff. All right, so let's talk about bunkers. So bunkers can be uh, are the uh, the Wehrmacht building that the pioneers can build on the field here. They cost 150 manpower, and they can be upgraded in th one of three ways. You can either put a heavy MG gun in there, uh, which is not a unit. It just means that the bunker now has, a, has an immobile MG gun that's stuck facing forward right in here. If instead you choose to put an actual machine gun inside the bunker uh, that you build from your, your base there, you can actually that, have that machine gun fire 360 degrees because it can fire it out of each door. So it basically becomes like a building. But unlike a building, the unit inside cannot be sniped and it cannot be grenaded effectively. So, uh, so there's that um, to, to, uh, to think about. Now, uh, the other thing that bunkers can do is they can be set up as an aid station and let's do that right here aid stations and repair stations uh, give you benefits to healing uh, not healing but resurrecting essentially infantry and healing tanks and vehicles and things like that so uh, aid stations specifically 
when you upgrade the bunker into a medic bunker, it provides two medics, and those medics will go out and grab injured units, units that have died on the field and are rolling around in pain, bring them back, and when it has recovered four or five bodies, it produces a grenadier squad for you to use. So there you can see we got a little medics here. Now, if you see your opponent has a, either an aid station or a medic station or a casualty clearing station is sending out medics uh, automatically to go and grab bodies, kill the medics. I know it's against the Geneva Convention, but you have to do it because it gives you A, XP, and, you know, G Geneva Convention doesn't mean anything next to XP. Um, also, it allows you to, uh, uh, to prevent them from getting their free grenadier squads. So the repair bunker... Just move some vehicles next to it that are injured, and boom, these uh, couple of pioneers will come out and fix it. And uh, meanwhile, the bunker with the machine gun just looks like a bunker with a machine gun in it. So that's the uh, the bunker, and it's very useful. You know, three different situ situations you can use it in. If you're playing with defensive operations, it lets you call down registered artillery on top of it, and it lets you reinforce your units next to it on the defensive doctrine. Um, so those are all two really cool powers that you can use with the, the, uh, the bunkers as well. Uh, let me think. Let's talk about um, the American machine gun nest, Rogers. What uh, cases would that be useful? Well, um, in team games, I've found it especially useful. Um, what I in, what I really like doing um, is I use it to secure one of our fuels. Like let, let's take Duclair for an example, which has the northern fuel, the southern fuel. Um, what I'll do often is uh, early game, I'll build an MG bunker, either the German one or the American one. I'll build that in the far north if if we start on the right. And then that will keep the fuel under our control unless they cut us off at the 10. But still, it's a very useful delaying tactic. It'll take them a long time because it'll suppress their first squad that goes up there. And uh, I really like doing that. So it's a really useful deterrent, so to speak. Um, it's good for area denial, resource denial. Um, but it is very situational, uh, especially the American MG bunker, because it costs fuel. It costs 15 fuel. Um, so it's really something you have to take into consideration. It'll slow down your tech a little bit early game, and sometimes that's not what you want. But at the same time, it'll help you keep your fuel longer. So in the end, it could work out. And with less effort, it lets you put your unit somewhere else, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the aid station. Now, that's an interesting choice. You usually don't want to build the aid station for the following reason. The medic bunker works for the Germans because it builds grenadiers at points in the game when you may only have Volks grenadiers or maybe you only have one squad of grenadiers. And so you might not mind a second or third or fourth squad of grenadiers necessarily. However, you usually have at least four rifles on the field already, or at least three, sorry, on the field most of the time. You don't necessarily want another one because the, uh, the upkeep is so punishing on the American side that having another rifle squad can be disadvantageous to you. So aid stations are very situational. Maybe if you're using a lot of riflemen already and uh, and you you know plan on using a heavy infantry strategy and you have all the supply yard upgrades that you plan to get, that's about the only situation I can see where you might be really predisposed to using the aid station. Otherwise, it's not something that usually gets used. Uh, in addition, uh, we have for, let's see, the Americans. What are you doing? They're just Barred moving around. Sorry. <laughs> In the addition, uh, the Americans also have the riflemen, which have the ability to build an observation post by default, whereas the Volks Grenadiers and regular Grenadiers can't build an observation post. They can only build barbed wire and sandbags. However, the American riflemen can gain the ability to build all the different uh, defensive stuff that we've talked about, the wire, the sandbags, the mines, and uh, actually just those three, plus the, plus the observation post that they get by default through the use of defensive operations. What's going on over there? Just trying to get my strap back. Pick up your feet. Mine. Ow. Oh, I see. <laughs> you found the mine. So, uh, did. did you prepare a defensive operations for us here? Uh, yeah, I built some uh, built some minor defenses over here on the right hand side. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you want to come take a look, but uh, it's it's rather magical with a sprinkle of fairy dust here and there. Okay. Well, we can do that. A lot of bars. There's a lot of bars. Oh my god. Wow, they're gone what? already. What? Run! <laughs> Red smoke is bad! Red smoke is bad! Run! Oh no! Oh, those are mines! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, why? 
Wow, Firestorm does do dot. That is freaking news to me. What the? Okay, run, 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 run! No, not that way! <laughs> Oh my god, they're so good. <laughs> you can kill everything you have. I'm going to kill everything you have. <laughs> Run! Oh, what was that? <laughs> okay, uh, hello, Al Qaeda. Wow, did that guy just die? Like, he was there. Oh, I can't see him. <laughs> Are those all that three so they can fire one every 30 seconds? <laughs> Yes, something like that. No, this is a bad plan. Oh no! <laughs> go, Tom Hanks. Go. Is that an officer? Never, never. Is that a V1? No. Oh, come on, man. Give me a chance at least. Oh. God. Oh no, MG Bunker, don't go that way! <laughs> I killed the medics, all of them! Oh, you call- Oh! <laughs> Get out of the way. Oh, they're all suppressed. I don't have any munitions. Oh, I wish I had my Jeep army right now. He'd be so screwed. There's one last thing that must be done. No, 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 no! Get away! Hey! Run! Oh, it's speeding up! <laughs> Oh, I don't have anything up? to call down. Did it have overdrive? <laughs> I don't know. It's the road. It ran on the road. <laughs> it got a damage engine and then it sped up. That was weird. Oh, jeez. That was a direct hit on one of my Neebles. All right. I think that's enough for the show today. <laughs> have a good day, guys. For Rogers, I am Richard signing off. <laughs>